Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please make sure you stay connected and let us know what you find interesting. We all watched the Starship Integrated Flight Test 2. The launch went perfectly, with the water deluge system preventing any significant damage to Stage 0. As we all remember, the 20 fixed outer engines are spun up and started by Stage 0, with only the inner engines capable of restart and gimbling. At launch, the methane and oxidizer tanks will have empty space called ullage, where the appropriate pressurized gas, methane or oxygen, is pumped in to create a pressure of about 7 bar. This will push the liquid toward the thrust puck and prevent vapor lock, as well as adding to the rigidity of the rocket skin. The Raptor engines all have valves to control propellant flow. These valves can operate under cryogenic conditions and are electrically actuated to open and close. Here is the inside of the Raptor engine by his dirt removes. Here is the oxygen turbo pump and the one for methane. At engine startup, helium gas from onboard tanks for the inner engines or provided through disconnects by stage zero for the outer engines spin up the turbo pumps. As propellant flows into the pumps, a little bit of oxygen is fed to the methane pump and a little bit of methane to the oxygen pump. Igniters are fired, and the stage combustion pre-burners, one oxygen rich, the other methane rich, start to power these pumps. Everything went perfectly on all 30 engines on this launch, a great improvement from integrated flight test 1, where 10% of the engines failed at startup. This allowed Starship to rise much faster this time, protecting the launch pad. And everything goes perfectly to here. Now if you've done your homework and watched the video on the N1 engine control system, you will remember that shutting too many engines off at one time, slamming those valves shut, creates a pulse of pressure in the propellant fluid. This can be called a hydraulic hammer, and it can travel through the system and burst pipes or destroy valves. This doomed some of the N1 rockets, but here we see SpaceX shutting off the engines sequentially, protecting the plumbing. Every mistake becomes a lesson when we learn from it. Now we see the Starship fire up and prove that hot staging works. We knew this already. Let's not forget that grid fin technology and hot staging were developed by the brilliant engineers of the former Soviet Union. Did hot staging damage the top of the booster? Possibly, but I don't think so. Starship fired all six of its engines, the three outer vacuum engines and the three center sea level raptors. That's a lot of power coming down on the top of the booster. This is a stainless steel skyscraper holding hundreds of tons of propellant in its tanks. All of this propellant is going to be shoved to the front of these tanks. Should SpaceX have left more engines burning on the booster to counter this thrust? because now we have propellant sloshing all through these tanks, just as the booster starts to flip. We see it here going up and away from the departing starship. This entire booster is still subject to the force of gravity, but without engines firing it would be in free fall and would not feel the gravity of Earth. Here the center three engines are still firing, providing enough of a g-force gradient to try to keep the propellants where they are supposed to be, down here at the thrust puck. The question is, was this enough? The starship heads on out, and the booster continues its flip. I suspect that at this point, the propellant is still sloshing too much, and the speed of this flip doesn't help. It would fling propellant toward the front of the booster, away from where we need it to feed these engines, and as the fuel sloshes, gas bubbles are created that need some time to dissipate. These three engines continue to fire and more engines are brought online in a controlled restart pattern. Here is the first sign of trouble. One of the Raptors did not restart. Why might this be? Was it the turbo pump? It could simply be a restart failure. Everything must be timed perfectly in a complex full flow stage combustion rocket engine. Problems must be quickly recognized and steps taken to prevent hard starts or engine explosions. A hard start is when too much propellant is in the combustion chamber when it ignites, causing a detonation rather than combustion. This can destroy an engine, and it can take out some of its neighbors. What else could go wrong? 
The Starship does not have baffles. Baffles in a propellant tank help control fuel sloshing. Sloshing can cause large gas bubbles to form in the propellant. And if they don't have time to dissipate, these can be pulled in here at the inducer and down into the turbo pump. These turbo pumps are generating megawatts of energy. And they are designed to spin against the resistance of fluid. If a gas bubble reaches this part, that resistance is suddenly gone. That's like pushing on the clutch as your car is racing down the road without letting off of the gas. The engine will over-rev, reaching dangerous RPMs. The exact same thing happens to this turbo pump. These blades instantly start spinning much faster. That increases the G-forces at the ends of the blades and can tear them apart, sending high-speed shrapnel through the casing. If there is enough shielding around the engines, this small explosion might be contained. If the engine itself explodes, it can take out the valves that would stop the propellant flow, and we will get liquid oxygen and methane streaming out into space. That could cause the outgassing we see here. A multi-engine rocket like Starship might have emergency shutoff valves further up in the plumbing so that an engine can be isolated from propellant flow. If not, there will be a sudden drop in the ullage pressurization. The systems will try to compensate by increasing pressure up here, but that just makes the propellant leak faster. On the booster, we see these other engines start to fail. Either they experience the same problem, or whatever happened to that first engine took out its neighbors, including one of the center engines. This is a bad sign, as these three engines have protected propellant flow. That makes me think that there was a turbo pump failure in this engine, with shrapnel taking out this one, and now we have cascading failures leaving the booster with asymmetrical thrust. And we clearly see a large explosion. This is an engine blowing up. There is complete shutdown of all engines and the FTS system is activated. That's it for the booster. But we have Starship still going strong. Starship flies for several minutes. Then we see this outgassing. This could be from a lot of things. This pattern of rapid gas expansion could indicate an engine failure, a turbo pump or combustion chamber explosion, but I don't think so. Actually, I think the Raptors worked perfectly. Remember during hot staging when all six Starship engines were fired at once? The three outer vacuum engines had an escape route for their exhaust from the hot stage ring vent ports here, but the center three engines did not and their exhaust would reflect off the booster dome and bounce back up into here. These walls could contain the pressure, but this could tear the welds between the thrust puck edge and the sides of the ship. It could also damage the pipes and controls for the engines, or the engines themselves, causing propellant containment failure, which would look like a puncture in an aerosol can. This venting of propellant, probably oxygen as we see it dropping rapidly, could send the starship out of control. In fact, an astute observer in the Florida Keys with a nice telescope saw what looked like the starship spinning before it terminated the flight. Whatever happened must have convinced the computers that the ship was not going to safely make its trajectory. Remember that in these test flights, starship is not trying to go to orbit. I call these flights transorbital because the ship reaches what would be orbital velocity and has clearly reached orbital altitude, having crossed into space at 100 kilometers, and now well above the Kármán line. But because it is on a ballistic trajectory, it is not meant to reach orbit. Like an ICBM, once we have second engine cutoff for SECO, Starship would just coast around the Earth and re-enter on the other side. But that's not going to happen, as whatever happened to Starship made it impossible to reach its proper trajectory. There are, of course, headlines shouting failure, but let's look at the successes. The launch pad is in fine shape and ready to go again, and there's no shortage of starships and boosters. The booster engines worked perfectly up to hot staging. Hot staging worked, and the booster and starship separated properly. All these are milestones, but the booster did destroy itself, and eventually so did the starship. What dramatic structural changes would be needed to solve these problems? None, most likely. Here are my suggestions. Shut down the booster engines exactly as you did before. Fire up only the vacuum raptors on hot staging. 
This would allow the exhaust of these engines to safely vent. Allow some distance to be gained before firing up the center engine, protecting the underside of the Starship, and not shoving the booster back quite so hard. For the booster, burn only the center engines during the entire flip maneuver. Do not try to start up the other center engines too soon. This will prevent propellant surges and allow time for the propellant to settle before firing up the rest of the engines. If these changes are made, I predict the integrated flight test number three will be a complete success. There's actually nothing wrong with the Raptor engines or turbo pumps that I can see. Let us know what you think. Thanks for listening and stay safe at Astroproterra.